Thank you Lee for your announcements. New service time starting September 1st. Sunday, first service, 9 a.m. Second service, 1045. Wednesday, classes begin at 6.30 p.m. New intercessory prayer day, Wednesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday, prayer 6 p.m., service 6.30. Men's Meeting, Bird's Egg Cafe, September 7th. Guest Speaker, Hannah Holt, September 8th. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Good morning, everyone. This is service number two, so we're already awake and excited and ready to worship. <laughs> we're glad to have you here with us this morning. We're glad to have new guests, new faces. I see some people coming in now. Well, we're excited to be here this morning. We're excited to worship. And if you're willing and able, we're going to stand this morning in the presence of the Lord. And today is also Communion Sunday, so let's remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us. Let's remember the one who rescued us from our sin and eternal death and separation from God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your precious sacrifice. Thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus, the spotless one, the perfect son. God, help us to remember this morning with deep joy and gratitude your sacrifice. Help us to know your love, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fault I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Oh, precious is the flow 
with Christ my Lord and now I'm raised to life forevermore my name's been carved upon your heart no not death no not hell could ever rip us apart
must pay the highest price And he has proven his great love for us And we will praise him with our lives And proclaim our
has the final word. Yes, it does. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Oh, he traded death for eternity. God 
almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God almighty, the great I am. I want to be near, near to your heart. Loving the world and hating the dark. I want to be dry bones, living again and singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am. Who shake before you the demons run and flee at the mention of your name the king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before Demons run and flee 
At the mention of your name, the King of majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can that we would pray for the sick this morning and he wants to do that right now so I we're going to let him have the room today amen Holy Spirit gets to tell us what we get to do next and so if there's anybody facing affliction today we want to pray for you in this moment this is this is the moment where the Holy Spirit wants to touch your body and heal you anyone here today that needs healing in your body would you just please come to the front no need to raise your hand just come right now this is just your moment we're going to pray for you that God would heal you and help you. That we have oil on both sides of the altars. So if you need healing today in your body, come this morning. God wants to give you a touch. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Father, we thank you this morning. Come on, church. Hey, amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. We're not just here singing the songs. We're going to see God do the business, amen, of the ministry. He wants to heal people. He wants to heal the sick this morning, amen. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've been walking through some things in your life. Hey, man, God wants to heal you today. We, we celebrate the remembrance of Jesus' body through communion, that he would heal us. Amen. We come to the front that the elders of the church would lay their hands on you, that you'd be made well. Hallelujah for healing today, Lord. Hallelujah, God, for healing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Healing come to you in the name of Jesus. Healing power come to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing power come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for a touch from heaven. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Yes, sir. Father God, I thank you for healing today in the name of Jesus. And Sharon, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you're touching her today. You're healing.
healing her by taking pain away. Yes, say hey, yes, Lord. Taking pain, Father God, from her body in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for healing today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for healing her today. Thank you, Father God, for this man's wife being touched by heaven. In the name of Jesus, pain go. Pain go. Pain go. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Pain go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for healing today. In the name of Jesus, pain, go. Inflammation, go. Sickness, go from you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching her today, helping her today. Healing in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. Be touched and healed today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for your hand touching and healing today in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Pain go. Sickness go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Yes, God. Hallelujah. Healing go. Healing come in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that chord. Hallelujah one more time. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, that heals us, Lord. Amen. Give him a shout of praise. He's worthy. Amen. Worthy, God. Worthy, Lord. Worthy, Lord. Worthy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah for healing us, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. New service time starting September 1st, Sunday, first service, 9 a.m., second service, 1045, Wednesday, classes begin at 6.30 p.m. New intercessory prayer day, Wednesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Overflow youth every Wednesday, prayer 6 p.m., service 6.30. Men's meeting, Birds A Cafe, September 7th. Guest speaker, Hannah Holt, September 8th. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service.
Good morning, second service. Let's get a shout of praise to Jesus. Woo! He's already in the room. He's healing today. Come on. Amen. He's worthy of it all, church. He's worthy of it all. I just want to take a moment to welcome all our guests. Thank you for joining us today. Any first-time guests, thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Those tuning in by live, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in every week. And again, if you're a first-time guest and you haven't filled out our, our guest cards, we got them in the back. Uh, see our ushers back there. They'll give you one. Gives us a little information about you. We can follow up with you, pray with you, all those good things. Uh, this is a house of prayer, amen? amen? Every Wednesday and Thursday night, 6 o'clock, led by Sister Patty. They, we are in this house praying and interceding for the families. And we're also interceding for the growth of our church, amen? Somebody say growth. Come on. Yes. We have our Living Springs Church Growth Development Campaign going on right now. Uh, we have a card in the back with the QR code, and you can, as the Lord leads, give to that place. Give to it. It'll go specifically for the developments around our facility here as he is growing the church. Amen? Amen. Thank you all for joining us again. I hope you all have a great service. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Adam. So good. So many amazing things God is doing. First service, second service. Thank you, Jesus, for church growth and what he can do and what he's going to do. How the ushers come forward for tithes and offerings this morning. From our message, I'm going to share a passage from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself. Don't you want to meet the God of peace in person? Don't you want to meet that guy? Yes, I do. The God of peace himself, which will sanctify you completely. When you encounter Jesus, something starts to happen in your life. There's a process taking place when you say, Jesus, come near to me. And when he draws an eye into you, I'm telling you, there's a change that comes. There's a peace that passes understanding that will sanctify you and help you in a complete kind of way. God's not a halfway kind of God. He's an all-the-way kind of God. And I want to tell you this morning, if there's any needs in your life, God wants to meet you all the way. All the way. He's not going to meet you half the way. He's going to meet you all the way. Thank you, Jesus, that you make us complete in this process of sanctification. Paul goes on the right to say, and may your whole spirit, say whole spirit, and soul and body, be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you know, he wants to make you complete so you can meet him in the air one day. And then we'll know what full completion is all about. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the giving that's within this house and the needs that were, are, are already met by heaven, God. We thank you in advance for what you've already done. God, we just stand in victory today, not defeat. I thank you, God, for what you've already done in the homes of every single person in this church. And in the lives of every single Christian believer in this church, God, heaven says yes, yes to you today as we say yes back. I thank you, Father God, for the miraculous today. Every need, every single one, God, that you see, I thank you, Lord Jesus, we stand today as overcomers of all obstacles, anything that might come in our way. God, I thank you that we have victory. We're going to stand and stand again and stand again and declare again, God, that you are good, you are faithful, you are trustworthy, Lord, and you are the God who keeps your promise. And I thank you today, Father, that you meet every single need, every medical bill paid, every note dismissed, God, every tuition paid for. I thank you, Father God, that you take care of business for us because you're the business God. You're the one who is the provider, Jehovah, Rapha, and Jireh, healer and provider, God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've been both of those things this morning. We just give you all the thanks. God, thank you for every gift and every giver this morning. All those tithing and giving online, bless, their, bless them, bless their household. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for your generous hearts giving. For the blood of life, thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Hey. 
to glorious life. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for all of our team this morning being here extra early. Can we give the, all of our team members a hand? They've been working hard for you. Getting services ready to go. It takes a lot to do church. And if you have any questions on that, you can come see me. I'll let, we'll let you know. We'll fill you in. And then maybe let you fill in. Amen. Because it takes many hands to make a task light, doesn't it, church? Thank God for what he's doing in this place. Hallelujah. Woo! Awesome week this week. Uh, getting to celebrate my birthday week with you. Any more birthdays in August? Any August birthdays? Raise your hand real high. How about anniversaries? Got one of them going on as well. Praise the Lord. 22 years married to this woman. Thank you, Jesus. She's been the blessing of heaven in my life, completing all these things. Wouldn't be here without you, baby. Thank you. Love you very much. And if you're celebrating this month, God bless you, your marriages, your, bir your birthdays. We love you. Amen. And these days we say birthdays. We don't say birthdays. We say birthdays. Amen. Because that's who we are. <laughs> and that's what we do. Praise God. We're starting a sermon series, a five-week sermon series over a topic that is, should be near and dear to all of our hearts called sanctification. You can't fit a topic of sanctification into a 30-minute sermon. It's impossible. The reason being is because it takes a lifetime to walk out the process. And God is so very faithful to help us with this, isn't he? God has a way of intervening in our hearts and lives. I know he's intervened in mine many times over and over again because he loves me. Because he cares for me, and because he wants the best for me. Can I tell you this morning that God wants the same for you? Yeah. Say this with me. God loves me. God cares for me. God wants the best for me. You've got to believe that if you're going to live close to him. You see, sanctification is an act of separation. Say separation from that which is evil. There's a lot of evil in this old world, isn't it? And there's a God of evil. His name's Satan, Lucifer, old Slewfoot. He's still at work. And his main objective is to get you in that place of sin. He wants to entice you with this thing called evil. And he's really good at that. He'll pretty that thing up. He'll dress it up all kinds of ways. But can I just tell you, it's lipstick on a pig that you're kissing when you, touch, when you kiss evil, when you kiss sin. And it is a kiss. It is something that you take intimately and personal. Sin is something that you take into your heart, and at times it will transform a person's life. Sin is, is, is devastating inside of a man or a woman, and it's devastating inside of a church. Can I tell you that this message of sanctification is something that we're going to progress in? Somebody say amen. amen. Because it is a process of progression. Why? Because it's a dedication unto God. It's not just separating ourselves from things we know are wrong. It's living for Jesus. Somebody say Hallelujah. You see, scriptures teach us a life of holiness. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No man. You must be holy. And this is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to obey that command. Say, I need the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Holy Ghost. yes you do. Because scriptures say, be ye holy for I am holy. And the only way you can is with his help. That's right, church. Sanctification is realized in the believer by recognizing his identification, your identification with Christ. In His death and resurrection, there's only one way to be saved. It's through Jesus. And by the faith reckoning daily upon the fact of that union. Every day we wake up, we should thank God for what He has done on the cross for every one of us. This offering of, of every faculty in our life is a continual dominion, submission to the power of the Holy Spirit. Without Holy Ghost, amen, we don't have what we need. He is the authority in the matter every single day of every week, of every month, of every year. Hallelujah and amen. amen. Sanctification in the Greek, hagaismos, means to make holy. Make holy. To be morally pure, spiritually whole, separated from evil and dedicated to God and His purpose for your life. Say this word with me this morning. Consecrate. To consecrate means to be set apart. And to be set apart from what? The ungodly patterns of this practices of this world. There are so many things that from birth we dive into that teach us to be ungodly. 
We are taught from birth, amen, how to be wicked, how to be gluttonous, how to be greedy, how to be selfish. In a baby's life, they have only a couple of needs, one of which is feed me, (laughs) change me, hold me, and keep me clean, right? That's what a baby wants the most. And when you hear a baby crying, it's going to be one of those four things. A baby's not going to be held in your arms crying about the bank account that you got to pay out of your bills. A baby's not going to be sitting there crying about if they've got a roof over their head or not. A baby's not going to be crying about the condition of your vehicle that you're driving down the road. A baby has very simple needs and desires that are very selfish at, at their heart. Because a man is born, a, a woman is one, their hearts are born wicked. All it knows is sin. And every person in that, rec- in, that, in that regard is in need of a Savior, aren't they? You know, a lot of kids get taken to church. But it's not until they're introduced to Jesus while they're there that something starts to change in their life. I thank God for Christian leaders that teach the gospel to our kids in this church. Thank you, Miss Shelby, and all of your team in the nursery. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, every one of you that teach the kids at Pleasant Hills Church. Uh, 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 children's home thank you very much for discipling children in the way they should go amen and amen why do i say all that because we're supposed to be consecrated to god and there's not an age limit on that by the way it doesn't say that the bible doesn't say you should start in your 20s starting to be consecrated to god i think i'll try this now no God wants us to know things from our childhood. He wants us to understand that when we were born, we needed a Savior. And to be set apart means to know Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank you to our youth pastors. Thank you to Jessica and Adam coming every single week, serving and serving and serving, going into the schools. Praise God. Amen. For him and his wife and, and, and their children doing the work of the ministry, setting apart themselves apart. Hallelujah, consecrating themselves apart for this godly work, amen, for a generation that needs to know Jesus again. We're in a war, a battle, a fight, and it's not over yet. And every person, every single believer in Jesus is called to arms. Every one of us, not just a few, not just 10%, every one of us. And the process of knowing this in our life, it changes everything. Yes, you have to be called. Yes, you have to be ordained in these things. But can I tell you, there's a five-fold ministry that your name is attached to because it's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And one day when you stand before your Savior, He's going to ask you one thing. What fruit? What did you do for me? He's not going to ask you how your mama was doing. He's going to ask you what you did to help your mama, help your daddy. How did you honor them? How did you serve your brothers and your sisters? How did you walk in this place of sanctification? Did you know my name and did you use it? Did you you truly believe in what my word said it could do? Did you stand in the gap? Did you be a watchman on the wall for somebody that needed Jesus? Did you leave the 99 to find the one? My son did that, by the way. We need to know what consecration means. And that's why we're going to preach this over the next five weeks. And our hearts will be changed. I promise. God is doing heart surgery right now in this place. He is operating. He is, he is pulling the gloves on. Kapow! Kapow! He's saying, nurse, scalpel, please. I'm about to do a work on somebody's life right now. And he is doing it. Amen. And we all get to be a part of this. Amen. Aren't we on the boat? Aren't we in the ship together with Jesus? Amen. Don't get out until he tells you to come. Because you will drown without the Holy Spirit's help. We need to know this information. And babies need to be taught this information. And youth need to be taught this information. And adults need to get a hold of this and live like this. So somebody can example it in front of them. Amen and amen. Everything we do is based in this with Jesus. It is so pivotal. It's where the door swings. It's the hinge upon that door. And if it's closed in your life, you need to start opening this thing up. Opening your heart to hear heaven. Amen? 
Sanctification. Woo! It involves being set apart from sin. So as to have, imitate companionship with God so we can serve Him effectively. Say that word, effectively. There are things in your life that you're doing right now that are not effective. I promise you. There are, st- there are stuff you're hanging on to from, from uh, that old-timey religion that Mama had. It, it just ain't the same these days. When in souls these days, amen, is by Jesus alone. But you've got to be willing to change to do that. You've got to adapt in season, amen. As Paul said, I am in season and out of season with this stuff just so I can be ready and come what may. Well, can I tell you, church, it's come. The world is here. And it is not backing down just because you showed up at church on Sunday to say, I'm, 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 account- I'm accounted for. Check my hand, God. No, the world is still out there lost as it can be. Lost as it can be. And it needs somebody to answer that Matthew 28 commission saying, go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Laying your hands on somebody who's sick and watch them them be made well. And while you're there, cast out a devil or two. Hallelujah and amen. amen. It is the season of this in our life where we grab a hold of this consecration, sanctification commission. Amen and amen. You see, God is committed to change me. And God is committed to change you too. Somebody say hallelujah. I need a little change in my life, God. Yeah, you do. Me too. I just want to remind you that if it, if it hurts, that means you're not dead. Praise God. Amen. God's at work on you. He's molding and shaping you. And sin doesn't want to just leave your life. It wants to hang on to the very bitter end. Why? Because it's attached to one place, hell. Sin is not attached to heaven, if you haven't figured that out yet, church. Amen. God is trying to separate us from this stuff that would keep us in chains, bound. God wants to help us so we're not dead yet. And that so so surely we would not die for eternal life, but be resurrected to life through Jesus Christ. I want to give you some words this morning very quickly. I'm going to try to to close up at 12, closing shop up at 12, okay? Y'all hold me accountable. If I go over, praise God. We're going to do it anyway. I'm going to do my best to be at 12. I had a, the first service, I had to be on point. I was, even, I was even too much on point. I had like eight minutes to spare. Royce and King was like, you got too much. You got to get that right, boy. I was like, yes, sir, you're right. You got time to preach. I'm going to preach. Praise God. Yeah. Y'all write this down, okay? These are important words you need to understand with some scriptures, okay? They'll be on the screen for you. For sanctification, the word sanctify. Say sanctify. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. need to commit some of these to your memory, by the way. Writing down is a good way to memorize things. Write it write down a couple of times. I used, to, I used to memorize scripture that way. Write it down three times. The reason, the reason I learned how to write things down is because mama, when I got in trouble, she'd make me write things down all the time. hundred times, boy. I will not kick my brother. Go write it down. <laughs> Oh, man, I did that. Like, I wrote 100, I won't kick my brothers 100 times, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. <laughs> we learn, we're stubborn, aren't we? That's why this message is so good. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. I read this over our offering. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, man. what? I love when scripture pops out at me like that. It just stands out. Because I'm connected to him that way. I want God's peace. How about you this morning? I want to know what peace is all about in the the middle of a world who doesn't have it. God wants us to, you know why God wants us to have peace? It's because he wants you to example peace. God gives us gifts so we can use them. Somebody say amen to that. He wants you to have peace today. He wants you to understand it so much and so well that it just pours out of you. You can walk into the middle of any conflict, any war. And be at peace. God wants you to be like that. Why? Because his son was like that. Jesus could walk into the middle of any conflict. As Peter, while he was chopping a dude's ear off, what Jesus was doing. And he'll tell you that God, my God, was at peace. Your God was standing there at peace. And he has to remind Peter, don't you know who I am? And that same Jesus that stood beside Peter that day is the same Jesus that stand beside, stands beside us. That we would call on him that the God of peace himself, in person, in the form of the Holy Spirit, would sanctify us completely. 
When you get God's peace, you get this place, amen, where God starts to work on your heart. Who has a temper in here? You ain't got to raise your hand. I'm just talking to you a little bit now. God says you don't have to be mad. This is the Holy Spirit, by the way. You don't have to be mad all the time. You don't have to be angry all the time. Why is your heart full of anger this morning? The Holy Spirit's talking right now. This is not me. God, speak, Father God, this morning. He doesn't want you mad and upset. He doesn't want you walking through these things because you take it out on your family. He doesn't want you mad at your wife, mad at your kids, mad at your, 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 your supervisor. He doesn't want you mad. He doesn't want you upset all the time. He wants you to know his peace. Are you all here this morning? Say amen. God wants you to be at peace. Why? Because when you have God, you have peace. When you ask him in, he comes because he's a God of his promise and he's a gentleman. He'll do what you ask of him. He wants you to invite, you, invite him in your heart today. He wants you to open your heart. He wants to work on that anger a little bit. He wants to work on that temper a little bit while we're talking about all this. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus right now for every person that has a temper in this place, every person that deals with anger, that you would start to work on their heart. Come on, God. You're the surgeon of the heart, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you do that. You take away that bitterness, that anger, whatever has caused that anger, God. You take it away from them, Lord Jesus. You cut it out. Cut it out, God. Cut it out. Cut it out of their hearts, God. Pull it out of their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, and you give them peace. You replace that with peace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Sanctify. Love. Our next word, love. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Write this down. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God. Read it with me. With all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all your mind. Amen. There are three in one things going on there, just like the Trinity of Trinities in Jesus. Amen. Three in one, heart, soul, and mind. And if any one of those things are out of sorts with God, there'll be something going on in your life. Jesus wants your heart. Why? Because the condition of your heart controls everything else within you and around you. The condition of Christ upon your heart is king, ruler. He's the one. He's the one, amen, with the, the scepter in hand. He's the one with a crown upon his head. Not you. Not you. He's the king. He's in your life if you've asked him into your heart. He sits upon that throne, amen, of your heart. And if he's truly the king, amen, and sits upon that throne, he has your very soul at his beck and command. Your soul will obey what your heart, amen, is full of. Your soul will long for those things. It's like a dog eating that vomit if you go back to sin, though. But when we let Jesus be king, amen, there's an enlightenment that comes to us that brings a righteous holiness unto our life, amen, where anything's possible. And the love of Christ starts to fill a heart and change a life and change, amen, the circumstances around us. And then God works on your mind. Your mind is the playground of the devil. But can I tell you, he doesn't get to own it. God owns your mind because He gave you a mind. He created it. He knit it together inside of your, your head, inside of your mama's belly. Satan doesn't own your thoughts. Amen. God, amen, is sovereign over all those things. But you've got to let Him have it. If you let Satan play on your playground, He's going to show up and push you off top the hill because He wants to be king of the hill. He'll push you right down and laugh at you and mock you and call you names. He'll call you idiot. He'll call, you, he'll call you slave. He'll call you oppressed. He'll call you demon possessed. He'll put all these thoughts in your head because you've given him that space. In the name of Jesus, take it back. Amen. Let God be the king of the hill of your life and your thoughts. Let him have control of what's going on upstairs. Amen? Amen. But the first step is let love into your heart. That's step number one. You've got to get there first before anything else can happen. Moving on, 12 o'clock, right? Blameless and holy, 1 Thessalonians 3.13. Here we go, blameless and holy, so that he may establish your heart, hearts, plural, blameless in what? Holiness. Who? Where? Before God and our Father. Why? Because at the coming of our Lord Jesus, he will be with all of his saints. We want to be a part of that group of people, don't we? Raise your hands if you want to be a part of the saints of God. I ain't talking about the New Orleans saints. I'm talking about these saints, amen, that will come marching in, amen. I thank you, Jesus, that I get to be a part of that army. Man, I'm telling you, what is that even going to sound like? Have you ever heard an army marching? 
I remember watching, uh, it was Brave, the movie Braveheart when it came out. And I'm going to keep this brief. I'm rabbit trailing here a little bit. I remember that movie came out, and one of the scenes in that movie, was one of the first scenes that hit me in that movie was when that army, that English army marched in, and it felt like the ground shook. The ground was shaking because of the army coming. Can you imagine being the one opposing that, that force? Can you Now let me put this in perspective. Satan trembles at the presence of God in his army, okay? He trembles at the presence of when we, as God's saints, come marching in. He won't stand a chance. Everything he'll do, he'll do it because he's in fear. He's afraid. Everything he does is because of fear. That's why when you become afraid, you're taking on that mindset. Stop being afraid. We talked about this on Wednesday night. There's two, there's two opposite ends of a spectrum. Amen. There's fear, and then there's love. Fear leads you to all these doubt and unbelief, these, these things, right? Where it just creeps in, man. You start living life and based in fear. But when Jesus comes on the scene, he's the moderator. He's the middleman. He says, hey, stop thinking like that. You're letting Satan push you around. He says, I got a better way. I am the way, truth, and life, by the way. I'm the gate. Hey, look over here at me. Holy Spirit's constantly saying, look at me, look at me. You're looking at the wrong things when you're afraid all the time. Look at Jesus again. Look at the gate. Look at the way. Look at the truth. Amen. And that will set you free from fear. And you'll start going to the other end of that spectrum. Amen. Where faith starts rising up and you say, oh, God, yeah, I think I can believe for this. Everybody, everybody in this place has more money than there is month, or more, more month than there is money at times. Everybody, everybody, this church has that situation right now. But if I as a pastor say, I'm just going to focus on this one thing, and God, you got to help me with this one thing. If you'll just make the finances good here, then everything will be good. Can I tell you, that's a lie from hell. That's not the truth. That's not me preaching the truth. The truth is this, is that i got to tell you, by exampling in my life, that I'm looking at Jesus, amen. I'm looking at the one, the only one who can meet every need, including the bills of this church and the bills in your life. He's the only one. Because all Satan wants to do is get your eyes on something that don't mean a hill of beans when it's all said and done. I want to be a part of these, this saint army, amen, marching in in victory because I figured out that Jesus has given me faith over fear and conquered all these things that held me bound. Somebody say amen to that this morning. Jesus, thank you, Lord God, that you made me blameless and holy. Okay. Perfecting holiness. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Since we have these promises. Say promises. promises. Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves then from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. God wants to make you holy and, and, and He wants to make you complete. I think there's an understanding here that gets misconcepted that God's this big, mean, evil God. And I think that happens a lot when somebody's had a bad daddy you'll hear on this earth. I think that happens a lot in the church when, when people mess up, they, they flinch when they, they mess up because they, they know that God is going to get them. Not true. Not true. You, you're doing that out of a response of, of fear of, of a human person that uh, abused you in some form or fashion. Abuse is one of those evil things that God uses on people's lives, or that Satan uses on people's lives. But God is the one that comes to heal the abuse. Amen? I said He comes to heal the abuse in your life. And if you've ever been abused by a parental figure, I want to tell you today that God has made a way for you. He has done it. He has finished it. He's finished it. So here's the thing. When you mess up, and we all do, you should run into the arms of your father, not flinch at his presence. I take my glasses off for that one. Amen. When we mess up, we should run to God for his covering again. Run towards Jesus for his sanctification again. 
Run towards Jesus so that he can make us pure and holy again. Run towards Jesus. Are y'all hearing that this morning? Stop flinching every time you mess up and saying, I'm not good enough, God. Quit telling yourself that lie. The thing is, yes, your flesh is going to die. You are not good enough. That's why you have Jesus. Run to Jesus. Say it with me. Run to Jesus. One more time so he hears you. I'm going to run to Jesus. Amen. And Satan beware because we're doing it. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to run to Jesus. And we're going to stop looking at all the junk and all the mess and all the, 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 the perverse stuff. And let God work this out inside of us because why? We're going to run to Jesus. Somebody put that on a shirt. Amen. Thank you, God. I had a pastor that say, if you mess, when you mess up, when you fall, make sure you fall forward. That way you're still ahead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God wants us to be ahead. He wants us to be right there with him. Amen. Amen. Stop trying to be the tail then. There ain't a whole lot of good things that come out of the tail. Understand? Okay? God wants to pull you up out of the mess and the mire. Make something of your life. Moving on quickly. Here we go. Pure heart, good conscience, and sincere faith. Say it with me. Pure heart. Good conscience. Sincere faith. 1 Timothy 1.5. The aim of our charge, say charge, is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. If you're going to work things out, you got to let it be pure and holy before God. God, see, He knows when you're messing around. He knows when you're messing around in church. He just already knows. You can't put on Jesus' face and walk in here in your Sunday best and let that be good enough. God knows what you're not dressing up inside of you. He knows what's going on in that messed up heart of yours. He knows what's going on with them thoughts of yours. And He knows that your soul's in need and in danger. But when you come to God with a pure heart, amen, all of a sudden you get to have this thing called a good conscience. Come on, you. Amen. That evil inside of you says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? And the king of kings is marching into that place, amen, that's rightfully his. And he says, I'm taking this ground back, devil. You don't own it no more. And all of a sudden inside of you, you got a peace that passes your understanding and your conscience, amen. It's like watching the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. Amen. If you're truly in the presence of God, man, I've seen some beautiful sunsets. I've sat on the north shore of Oahu at Sunset Beach, and I've watched that, that sun go down in that green flash. That's a real thing that God created for us to see. I've been on mountaintops and watched sunrises and sunsets. I've been privileged to go to other countries and watch the same. But can I tell you, when Jesus comes into my life, and man starts to work on my heart. And this place of peace starts to happen inside of me. There's no earthly sunset that can compare to that moment inside my life. And I can tell you today that there's nothing in your life, as beautiful as this world may be, that will compare to what Jesus can do inside your heart if you'll just let him. Pureness, holiness, righteousness, truly coming to God, truly relenting of this flesh life and being sincere. God wants you to have a sincere faith. We just don't pray for things willy-nilly style. Oh, man, give me a million. I need a million dollars, God. Or I need a new car, God. Or I need a new house, God. We don't pray like that here. Why? Because none of those things will appease what God is wanting to do. God is wanting to give you, inside of you, something that the world can never give you. The world loves the million-dollar checks. It loves the houses and the cars and the planes and the boats and the trains. It loves all of that. But God says, son and daughter, don't you know? That one day I'm going to make it all brand new anyway. Amen. If you only know who I am. Now I'm telling you, if you get a hold of this, you can go through a whole lot of stuff in a short amount of time. You can get through whatever you're walking through because Jesus is with you. Somebody say amen, please. Amen. Pure and blameless. Philippians 1.10, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. It's at hand, guys. Be pure and blameless you got to understand that there's a testing of the spirits within the body. He wants us to be able to have the Holy Spirit so we can know what the bad ones are. Amen? 
If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, then you missed the last three weeks of church because that's what I've been preaching up in here. And if you don't have that in your life, you're going to have a hard time understanding what's good and what's bad. You're going to have an even harder time understanding how to get through a thing because you have not got the power that you need to get through it. It is the Holy Spirit that lets the missionary go to the mission field. It is the power of the Spirit that gives the pastor the message to preach. Are y'all understanding this morning? And it is the power of the Spirit, amen, that sends the evangelists out into the world to share the good news of Jesus. And it will be the power of the Holy Spirit in your home that sets your home free. If you're not inviting Him into you, you're not inviting Him into anywhere else. Because you've rejected Him in the third person of the Godhead. I'll be praying for you about that. Because God wants to see you be set free from sin. Romans 6, 18. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. Woo. Man, I am bound in righteousness, y'all. There are things my flesh wants to do, but I just can't go do it. I just can't get out there and get into it anymore, right? The parties and the clubs and the carousing and the drinking and the drugs, all that stuff. Man, my flesh was cloud nine. But I don't serve that devil no more. You see, I've been, I've been touched by this man named Jesus Christ. He reached right into the middle of my chest and changed my heart. He made me a, do, a new person. Amen. And those old things, man, just don't appeal anymore. They're not me anymore. God set me free from sin. He can do the same for you. Moving quickly here, just one or two more. Died to sin. You've got to die to sin in sanctification. Romans 6, 2. By no means. Exclamation point. Thank you, Paul. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Whew. How can you live in it? How can you live it unless you have trials? And many, how can you live in it unless you let yourself be convinced that it's okay? How can you live in it? When God came into your life, the old things that you still hang on to, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who hang on to pornography and drinking and drugs and foul language and sex and all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. That the church these days, these days in, in certain places, in certain, uh, in certain parsonages, say it's okay. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not. It's not okay. It's not okay for you to be that kind of person. God doesn't want you to be that kind of person. He doesn't want you out there with a filthy mouth cussing up and down the street and every time you, you get upset. He doesn't want you watching pornography. He doesn't want you chasing men and women around. He doesn't want you drinking on the weekends and coming to church on Sunday. He doesn't want you doing that stuff. He loves you more than that, don't you know? He loves you. He sent his son to die so you, that you wouldn't have to do those things to have fulfillment and completion in your life. He sent his son. Why do we still choose it, though, then? The reason is because you haven't died to it. You haven't killed that thing yet. You haven't picked up your holy sword, amen, called the Scripture and you haven't plunged it into that sinful thing's heart yet, is why. You need to pick up what Scripture says, amen. How can we still live in this stuff? Sin, you got to go. Snap right into it, right there, just like that. And every time it comes to you, you do the same thing over again. You just cut its head right off. I am no longer bound by these chains, for I am a slave to righteousness unto my Father, who is a holy and righteous God. Amen. When you quote Scripture like that to Him, it does not have power to stand. It trembles at God's Word. No authority except God's authority. we got to get on that train. Amen. You need to start speaking to the things in your life that you've let, you've let stay there. You let it stay there. You see, people blame God for sinful thing, things. If God's good, then God's got to be bad. Lies. 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 God created all things good. It's man who messed it up. We're the ones at fault, not him. That's why he sent his son. To sanctify us, make us holy, amen. Are y'all getting this this morning? Last thing is this. Last thing is this. 1201, okay, I got one more thing. <laughs> Slavery to righteousness say it with me slavery to righteousness it's on the screen which does what leading to holiness yeah we're human beings Romans 6 19 I'm speaking in human terms thank you Paul hey Paul was an incredible writer by the way he put it so eloquently sometimes and then he was just so blunt right like listen 
I know that y'all dumb. Y'all human beings like I am too, right? <laughs> so I'm going to speak in this human term. Because you have natural limitations. We need to understand it's because we don't have the power of God that we need God. We don't have his understanding. We don't have his wisdom. We don't have his knowledge. We don't have his authority. You cannot speak and the world be created, the earth be created over again. You don't have that. Only Jesus. Only God. Now I have been able to be in the middle of a, a miracle moment and speak to the clouds, which I thought was pretty cool while we are down in Mexico. We just set up our, our service and all the equipment, all the musical equipment and all the the sound equipment was set up. It took us a, an hour and a half to do all that. And there was 20 of us. Set up all the chairs. We got ready to go. We done knocked on all the doors. Prayed for all the people. We're ready for service. And here comes this rain cloud out of nowhere. In Mexico. Now we're raining in Mexico. It's hot and dry and all that kind of mess. All of a sudden, they got this huge black storm coming right at us. What in the world's going on? Satan at work. Wants to get you fearful. Wants to get you to say, oh, we better pack up shop. There ain't nothing going to happen here tonight. It's going to be too rainy. What do you want you to do? That's what he wants you to do. Because you got human limitations. It's too cold outside. I don't think I can make it to church today. It's too hot. Oh, man, if I leave this air conditioning, I don't think I can make it to church. Human limitations. I'm sick today. I don't think I can pray for my brothers and sisters who are sick. Human limitations. I don't think I can prophesy because, Ben, I don't feel very prophetic today. Yeah. I'll wait till tomorrow. Maybe the, the spirit prophet gift will come up inside me. Human limitation. Satan always will lead you to a place that diminishes what God is fixing to do. Always. He hates you being successful. He hates Jesus being successful through you. And so whatever tactic he has to use, he will use that to lead you to this place. God, thank you for setting us free. We have to present our members, these, these things, these impurities in our life that are lawlessness to God so that we can be slaves of righteousness, which lead to sanctification. Hallelujah. I lied to you. Two more. Obey His commands. 1 John 3.22. And what do we ask? We receive from Him. Is this okay this morning? Because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. Y'all hear that this morning. 1 John 3.22, obey His commands. The key to sanctification is to obey what God says do. And if you struggle with that, that means you need discipline. Romans chapter 5, verses 1-4 through 4 talk about discipline. They talk about how long-suffering produces character, right? And character produces hope. And hope doesn't put us to shame. Praise God. That we don't be so shameful to go hide ourselves over in a corner that we can't obey God. Right now, He's asking you of one thing. And it's the same command that He gave the apostles. Same one that he gave to the disciples. Go with you to all the world and preach the good news of who I am. That's what he told them. That's what he's telling you today. Lay your hands on the sick and they'll be made well. But you've got to have faith, sincere faith. We just read about that. Cast out some devils, amen. They have no authority unless you give it to them. We have authority in Jesus. I'm going to obey his commands. Somebody say amen to that. Last one is this. You must overcome the world and be overcomers of the world. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Praise God for that moment. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Do you have faith today, church, in Jesus Christ? Can you believe for greater things? Does all this sound possible or is it impossible today? Oh, that's a good answer. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's faith rising up inside of you then that God's going to do a good work. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come forward. Worship team to come forward, please, very much, if you don't mind. Guys, thank you very much. We're going to pray for anyone here this morning that's struggling with these circumstances. Then we're going to have communion at the very end. Thank you, Mr. Royston. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for being with us today. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, start to pray this morning. Come on, start to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoo! Two services, Lord. Never thought we'd see this, Lord, but you've been faithful. God, I can only imagine what you're going to do in another six years. How many lives will you have saved through this place in the obedience of your people? 
How many souls will be made well, Father God, because of the obedience of your people? How many, Father God, what will you do in this city, God, because we simply obeyed what you asked of us? I ask you this morning that you convict the hearts, God. You're the God of conviction. You're not the God of condemnation. You're not the God who slaps us because we messed up. You're the God who lifts us up because you convict us for change. And I thank you for that Holy Spirit moment right now, right now in this congregation. Whatever it is you're facing, God says, I can help you with that. If it's something that you've been dealing with for a long time because you've been not taught the truth and you've been believing lies, I just bind those lies within your heart right now and I command them to leave your body, leave your heart, leave your mind, leave your soul. I command evil thoughts from you and I command freedom inside of you in the name of Jesus because God, you are the God that brings conviction to the table of our life. Convict hearts this morning for change. And whatever it is, whatever it is that's been separating you from God, we're going to give it to Him today. Amen. The Bible says that we confess our sins before each other. Amen. And our God will hear us from heaven and answer that request. He'll heal you. He'll help you. So I pray in the name of Jesus right now. Any one of you here this morning are dealing with something, I want you to come. We want to pray with you. We want to meet you here at the front. We want to, we want to pray that God would, would help you, would, hurt, would heal your heart and change your life. Anyone here this morning dealing with sin and you want to get your life right with Jesus, come on this morning. Just for a few moments, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Convict the hearts, Lord Jesus, of change. Come on. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anything separating you from God, maybe anger, maybe lust, maybe pride, anything God says, give it to me today. Give it to me today. Give it to me today. Come on, church. Hey, hey, he loves you. Thank you, God. We're not just preaching the message. We're living the message. Amen. We're living the message. Thank you, God. You take anything that separates us from you. In the name of Jesus. What'd you say? Unforgiveness? Yes, amen. If anybody's dealing with unforgiveness, maybe you have a, a loved one that's hurt you in the past. Maybe a, a recent hurt, a recent pain or sorrow, but something somebody's done to you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, John, I'm going to let you pray that out, okay? John, come over here to the front, please. Pray that out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, the, the Father, I just kept on hearing that unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. Hallelujah, God. Father God, right now, we just come before you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We know the power, Father God, that you have, Father God. And we just ask, Father God, that you just give, we just give those people, Father God, that are in need, that are in need of unforgiveness right now, Father God, with a sincere heart, Father God. Yes, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over them, Father God, yes, God. so that they would be made set free, Father God. Yes. Because it's hard, Father God, for you to forgive us, Father God. Well, we can't forgive those who have harmed us, Father God. It's very important, Father God. It's so important. Jesus, and we just thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Instilling them, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Jesus. The, for, the forgiveness they need to, to you, have, God. Father God, for those who have hurt, hurt them, Father God, in the yes. past. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for this, Father God. Yes. Thank you for revealing them to, to me, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank, you. thank you, Lord. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, right here and right now, I surrender my heart to you, my whole heart, every part of it, every part of me, I surrender it to you, Lord, according to your word, that you would sanctify my life and make me holy. I want to meet you one day, Lord. I want to see you face to face. I want to hug your neck, Jesus. Make me holy, God, before you. So I can do that. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Have the ushers come forward. Thank you, prayer team. Have the ushers come forward. We'll pray over the elements for our communion this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, guys. Awesome morning. It's been pretty cool. If you've been here for two services, it's been real cool, real awesome. We had a pretty good crowd at 9 a.m. And uh, praying that that grows. If you look around, there's plenty of room for you to invite somebody to church, okay? And I promise you, if you'll step out in faith, listen here. If you'll step out in some faith, God will meet you there. Just like he met us over in Tyler, Texas. Pray about that young lady. God wants to fill churches, church houses up with people. He wants to. It's his heart. Do not forsake the gathering of the brethren for that reason, right? Have you been encouraged today? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the, the bread and the juice. We thank you for the body and the blood, God, that was given to us. We remember, Lord, what you've done today. We remember. It's what makes us holy. You make us holy, God. And I thank you, Father God, for the power of healing, the power of strength in the, in the body that was broken for us, bruised, pierced, Father God, so that we can be made well. So strength might come to us. And I thank you for the blood today, Lord Jesus, that sanctifies us and makes us whole. Thank you, God, for washing us clean. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, man. You can pass those out. Amen.
broken for us, God, given upon the cross so that we could have life. Healing and strength come to you this morning. If your body is sick or weak, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, by his body, would make yours well. In Jesus' mighty name, healing come to you as we remember the body of Jesus Christ together. Lord, we thank you for your blood that always, eternally sets the captive free. Thank you, God, for your blood that covers me, that washed away my sins. In fact, say this with me, church. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that covers me, that washed me white as snow, that redeemed my soul and made me whole. Father, we thank you for that promise. We thank you, God, for your covering over us. Salvation being our state. In your holy name we pray. Amen, amen. Take it together. Hallelujah. And amen. Has it been good this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him another shout of praise then. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, a few announcements before you go. On September 7th, the men's ministry meeting is going to be at 8 a.m. at the Bird's Egg Cafe. Men, are you? do you like the bird's egg? Amen. Even better, do you like Jesus? I'm going to be there for both. How about you? September 8th, we have a guest speaker, Miss Hannah Holt. She's with YWAM, Youth with a Mission. Just came back from the Olympics led a bunch of people to Jesus, and she's taking a team back over to Europe very soon. I want to hear what that type of person has to say, amen? How about you? She'll be here with us on the 8th and the 22nd. Our presbyter, our sectional presbyter, Pastor Chris Wilson, will be here. He'll be speaking on the, the present state of our section and whatever else God puts on his heart to say. And then on the 29th, uh, we'll have Wally Cook, uh, our El Salvador contact uh, that we've been going to see uh, for a couple of years now. We want to let him bless us with a report on, on the state of El Salvador. We pray on Thursday nights. Service starts at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. We love you. God's going to do something every time we meet. Amen? Amen? Do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, and it's for that reason. Amen. Give the Lord one more shout of praise as you go out today. God bless you. Thank you for watching my life. Thank you, Jesus.